It's often said that the success of a secondary starts with the pressure generated up front. And you lost two guys off of last year's front line in Taylor Thompson and Marquise Frazier who started an awful lot of games. Mm -hmm. From what you've seen at the back end of the defense, how does the new line look and how do you anticipate that affecting what you guys do in the back? Um, you can't replace any guys like Taylor Thompson or Marquise, but I mean, Marcus is back and uh, better than ever. And uh, we still got Pitt coming back, which is a dominant force in the middle. And then you just got a lot of young guys like Bo Barnes and Gennier coming back still too. He's, a, he's an old vet, but he's getting better. And then you just got a lot of guys that just want to work. And uh, the freshman class is really helping us a lot by just bringing in a lot of competitive edge and just making sure everybody is on their P's and Q's every day. Defensive backs, sort of as a rule, seem to be very competitive guys. And based on what you hear out on the practice field, that certainly fits you. Is that something that's born into guys, or is that something you have to learn and develop as you grow as a player? Um, I think I, I think some people are born with it, but uh, as some people come around us a little bit, they try to they gotta they gotta talk because everybody else is doing it, and it's something that you're just out there on the island, and you gotta know that all the pressure is on you, so you just gotta want to perform. So I think some people are born with it, but once you be out there and you just you dominate a guy one time it just comes <laughs> so when you're talking to somebody is that sort of an internal talking to yourself to boost your own confidence or are you really trying to get in the other guy's head more than that yeah my talk is just more just to keep the competitive edge during practice I feel that uh, if people aren't out there talking and trying to get better it's a real dull practice and uh, in years past when people aren't out there talking it just seems like we're just going through the motions but when you talk a little bit more everybody wants to win and everybody wants to make sure that they have that edge so just keep the talk up and um, if you get beat, you get beat, you come back again, you talk a little bit more and try to win the next one. If you do get beat, and obviously every defensive back gets beat once in a while, how are you able to wipe that out of your mind and forget about it and regroup for the next play? Uh, you just got to have a short memory. Uh, as a DB, you know that every play there's a chance that you can make a play and there's a, play that, a chance that a, a play can be made on you. So, I mean, if you just go out there with that competitive edge and just know that any other play could be yours, I mean, you get beat once, but you get two picks and you go on with a good day. Last year, Coach Odom and Coach Mason both said that in the second half of the year, you really came on and finished strong. What changed? What was the big improvement that you made over the course of last season? Um, I think just my attitude towards the whole game. I uh, stopped trying to just be just a person out there. I just kind of, in the beginning of the season, I felt myself just taking a role and just kind of sitting back. And then towards the end of the year, as I got more comfortable, I just felt like uh, I just was, I had a chance to make plays and I could still make those. And I felt like I was a player. So, I mean, they're out there to get made. So I could do it. And they were needed to be made because we weren't making a lot of plays in the, in the, in the ending of the year. So. All right, you mentioned you weren't making a whole lot of plays. Three years ago, this team had 17 interceptions. Two years ago, 10. Last year, six. What's changing? How, why do you, what do you account for that trend? Uh, I really can't say, truthfully. I feel that as a DB hole, we had a good year last year. Uh, we had less, less passes actually scored on us than years past. But, I mean, we didn't get the ball out the air as much. But we were also off the field a lot more than we were last year. So, I mean, you could you could say it's not people getting to the bar and you could like try to put all the, the blame on the DBs and stuff like that, but I mean, it's a new year and we're here to try to make plays. <laughs> okay, and then also three years in a row, SMU has sent a defensive back to the NFL. Yeah. What does that do when you're in position meetings with the rest of the defensive backs? What does that do in terms of getting the younger guys to buy into what, Co what Coach Odom is teaching or even watching what you guys as the upperclassmen are doing? to have that credibility of those guys being in the NFL now? I mean, just seeing guys from your position that you know, like personally, like me with Richard Crawford and Sterling Moore, these are guys that came in. When I came in, they were here, and Richard came in with me just to know that, I mean, those guys came in when I came in, and now they're in the league. It just kind of gives you a hunger just to know that, well, they came from the same place you were at, so there is a chance to make it out of here. So it just makes, it makes everybody just have a sense of, like, uh, I could be the next one, so everybody wants to be on the field. We've talked to a bunch of offensive players this week, but you've gone against the offense when you go live, when you go into team drills. From a defensive standpoint, what does Garrett Gilbert look like, or what does this offense look like with him running the show? Garrett Gilbert is amazing. Uh, he makes you he makes you play good D. Uh, I've, I've broken up a couple balls of his, but uh, every one of them were perfect. So it really, I think that Gilbert Gilbert really he ups the offense a lot because he, he's a vocal leader and he leads by example. And then he also ups the defense because he makes he makes you have to be in the right place at the right time. Because if you slip up, the ball will be in the right place and it's gonna make you look real bad. So 
I feel he makes me better, so I'm glad for Garrett being here. You guys were the number four scoring defense in Conference USA last year, and you did lose a few key starters, but you got an awful lot of talent coming back as well. How good can this defense be this year? I think the defense could be real good. We, we could be as good as we want us to be. Uh, nobody could beat us but ourselves. If we come here ready to play every day, I think we're going to have a good season. Out of the young guys that you've seen who were either backups last year or maybe even among the newcomers, who's caught your eye a little bit? Who stood out as uh, a potential big contributor down the road? Uh, two guys that really have been, been making a big progress to me would probably be Jay Gray and uh, Chris Parks. Uh, Chris Parks just working on technique-wise has been really good on that, and Jay Gray has made a big jump and uh, really uh, saw the nickel spot open, and both of them are fighting for that position, and both of them are hungry, want it, and they both seem like they, they're progressing a lot, both in film work and technique-wise and also athletic. They're both getting bigger, so those are the two people that I've seen the biggest improvement in just off of play-wise.